We've been working with a single dimension array for quite some time. We know that it is linear in nature and it can only store single row of similar data. But often, you'll be required to store and arrange your data in a form of a table or a matrix, like a pixel graphic of an image or a chessboard. Multidimensional array is like a collection of single dimension arrays of same length. That is, for every row, the number of columns must be the same. That's why it is also known as rectangular arrays. In real life, a good example would be a weekly sales record, which keeps track of every unit sold daily, 7 days a week. This is the syntax to declare a multidimensional array in C-sharp. Comma denotes multidimension. In this case, single comma means two dimensions, two commas represent three dimensions, and so on. For this illustration, let's have a two-dimensional array called weekly sales. Similar to one dimension array, you can initialize and define its size implicitly by providing the values upon declaration. Or, you can use the bounded initializer syntax like this, which only means you can explicitly tell your compiler to allocate four rows with seven columns each before assigning any values. You can use any of this declaration and initialization syntax as you prefer. You might wonder, so how data are stored in computer's memory in a two-dimensional array? The answer is, it is still the same with a single dimension array, linear and contiguous. You can validate it when you access its length property. Let's check it in code. If we have an array of weekly sales with 4 rows and 7 columns each, when we access the array's length property, you see that the output gives us an array length is 28 that is actually 4 times 7. So, to access a specific location in your two-dimensional array, you must provide two indices as well. The first represents the row index, and the second represents column index. Again, this is zero-based indexing. It means that having this code weekly sales 1, 2 equals 99 would replace 14 with 99. And this code prints the value 23 on the console window. When you traverse through a 2D array, you use a nested loop. The outer loop represents the row and the inner loop represents column. This code tells us that for each row, all seven columns must be accessed first, one by one, before proceeding to the next row. In addition to the length property which gives the actual size of the entire array regardless of its dimension, you can use the getLength method to return only the length of the specified dimension and not the entire array. In this example, getLength0 means first dimension which is the row in our two-dimensional array. Get length 1 means the second dimension, which is our column. And if you have the third dimension, you can use get length 2 and so on. Let's see this example in code. I've added two console write lines here for you to see the difference between length property and get length method. Then, I'll add console write line here to display each row on the next line. Let's run the code. As you can see, length property gives us 28 regardless of array dimension while the getLength method with argument 0 returns 4, represented by the number of rows, and the getLength method with argument 1 returns 7, represented by the number of columns. Finally, the nested loop allows us to access all items sequentially and display it in a matrix form. Let's go back in code to modify the layout to display both the column and the row headers. First, I'll change the foreground of my column header to yellow, and then I'll start the header on the next line and a tab. I'll type Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and all separated by tab, and change back the text color to gray. Inside the outer loop, for the row header, I'll also change the text color to yellow before displaying week and then the week number. Then, change the text color back to gray. Let's check the output. And it looks good. Now, let's add a bit of simple math here. I'll add another column here just for display and I will not be modifying the array structure. Let's compute for the total units sold per week and display it right after Sunday for each week. So to do that, inside the outer loop, but outside the inner loop just on top, I'll declare a variable total and initialize it to zero. This variable will reset every time the outer loop is incremented to perform the next row. Then, each unit sold per day starting Monday up to Sunday will be added to this total variable and display its content right after finishing the inner loop. I've changed its color to green so you can spot it easily. Last thing, I'll add a total header next to Sunday, and let's check the output. And that's it! 
For every week, the total of units sold daily is displayed per row. And once again, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe for more programming and circuit tutorials.